Hello everyone, Stuart from Stubu Gaming here, just doing a requested video on the crafting and fusion system. So I'm going to be looking at crafting initially, um, first and foremost, um, talking you through how you go about finding blueprints, um, how you use them, what the uh, user interface is all about, uh, how crafting itself works, and various other points like that. So I'll get into that straight away. So first and foremost, you can find blueprints while doing missions. Now, I'm currently not going to go and look for some, mainly because you never know when they're going to drop. They can either drop from chests, sometimes they'll drop from enemies. But to be perfectly honest, the much better system for finding blueprints is to go to Captain Ragnar Van Winter. So initially, um, you will go to the... Uh, the screen where you've got the items to purchase. Now I've never ever seen them on the first screen here with the armors or weapons or anything like that. The only place I have seen them previously is on the second screen and they always appear at the end after the Sigmunds, Signums even, not Sigmunds. So they'll appear here and you usually get either Rare or Artificer, okay? So Rare ones I think usually set you back about 5,000, Artificer are usually 50,000, so they are considerably more expensive, in fact 10 times the cost, um, but again they are much better quality items that you get out of it. So I could wait for the two and a half minutes to see whether any appear, but to be perfectly honest I'm not going to because I think I've probably got most of them. So let's go and have a look. We go to the crafting station, which is the Omicron Arc. Uh, you find him part way through the initial campaign, so just after you've found Metrodor Thelema, I'm going to say, or Thelema, whatever you want to say. Um, so you find her, and then you have to try and find some way of finding the spacecraft. You go on a priority mission, so it's the first one you actually get, and it's called Feral Beasts. So that is actually the mission that you have to go on to find your Tech Priest. Okay, so once you've completed that, he will appear here. And he is your window to crafting, appearance, fusion, modifying your skills, etc, etc. So... I'm going to do the crafting and fusion first, but if this video is not going on too long, I might even go into the modification system, etc. Okay. So if we select him, obviously first window that I looked at a minute ago was your salvage, um, and the second is crafting. Now what's important to note is you do have a filter, so if you're looking for something in particular, don't just go scrolling through because it will take you a while and it literally cycles back through so you can't go right to the end very easily because as soon as you get to the end it goes back to the beginning again the best way of doing it is by pressing triangle on PlayStation 4 obviously there will be a tooltip on whichever version you're playing whether it be PC or Xbox you can then go to the type of item you're looking for so for instance if I want to try and make a one-handed melee weapon I select one-handed melee it filters out all of the non melee weapon results, non one-handed melee weapon results I should say. So if I want a new power hammer I can go down to power hammer you have to press circle after selecting your melee weapon and you'll see the triangle appears next to the um, drop down again and your options appear at the bottom so if I do that again if I press triangle click on one-handed melee down the bottom it's just saying select and back and one handed melee is flashing so if I press back now the triangle appears and I've now got my select, filter, view items etc at the bottom that's how you know you're in the correct mode I can now select whichever I want so if I go down to the power hammer as stated the number next to it is the number of them you can craft with your basic materials So. There are two types of materials, basic and advanced. If I press square, that will take me to my materials section. No, it won't. R3 will take me to my materials section, sorry. 
and I've got two options. I've got my basic ones, which are your blessed alloy, your chemical region, your electrofragment, ancient mechanism, and machine god spark. Okay, so you get those from finding them in the world or from salvaging equipment. So the light blue you get from salvaging anything, the purple you get from salvaging artificer items, and obviously, judging by the colour, machine god spark for salvaging relic items. Okay. You also have a second tier of items. The second tier is your advanced tier. Okay, and these are made by using your basic items. So if I want to wake, make one adamantium plate, I will need to use 20 of the blessed alloy. And to make it, I press triangle once. Okay, so that's used 20 of my blessed alloy and it's made one more adamantium plate. So the refining process tells you everything you need to know about what you need to make it. So this one is electrofragments, this one's chemical reagent, and that one is blessed alloy and electrofragments. So if I make one of those, that one is blessed alloy and chemical reagent. So I'll make one of those, that one's chemical reagent and electrofragments. So it's quite simple, it does talk you through what you need. These ones, however, are much more not important but they're much more interesting in what they do so for instance I can make one of each of these and it tells you when you've run out of materials so you don't have to worry about not having enough okay so I've now got one of everything at least of my advanced items and I've got a fair number of all of my basic items. So I can now click back to go out of my materials list. If I now press X on my hammer to select it, I go into the material window. Now you should be able to see that you've got pictures of what's required in your standard basic slots, which I can fill with square. You can fill them individually by pressing X on the space but to be honest I don't see why you would you would want to do that that's just filled your basic slot so what that will give you is it will cost you 2200 credits for a green item zero time and zero fate points to make however that will be a very very basic item it won't give you any bonuses whatsoever if we go on to the red icons the red icons are special icons now they're the ones that use your purple advanced materials and when you select it you'll be able to select any of those advanced materials now there is a tooltip at the bottom of each one so for instance on that one which is called micro apparatus it optimizes the random ro roll value for all adjacent enchantments by 50 percent so for instance if you are going to get a plus 10 on a um, for instance uh, plus 10 damage it will give you plus 15 instead so it optimizes it by 50% extra so if I put that one in there so that will mean that that slot there if you have a look at the tooltip on the right hand side of the screen yeah instead of it being a random roll as it is at the moment if I put it back in it becomes an offensive enchantment okay so that's made sure it's an offensive enchantment that is being selected if I go across to this one over here, and if I look at the advance for the electro wiring, optimizes random roll value for the attack or defense power rating and base parameters for damage, deflect, dodge, damage reduction of the item by 50%. So that's more specific to attack and defense rather than um, just generic. So if I put that in, that changes the top one from random to a defensive enchantment. And I can go on and put another one in that slot there. Now, if I read, if I just go on to it and read the tooltip, optimizes random roll for attack and defense again. This one, 15%. So that one's not quite as good. But, and all enchantments of the item by 15%. So it's not even ones that are next to it. So that one does 15% for everything. So it might not be as powerful an enchantment singularly, but it does all enchantments. So I'll put that back in. Okay. Don't worry about it. I, I will build this item, but to be honest, I'm not going to um, 
worry too much about it, about losing the items. This is just a tutorial, so I've got for enough to make 45 of these items, and I can always make some more of these advanced as well, so not a problem. So we then have the standard advanced materials, okay? Now that sounds odd saying standard advanced, but trust me, um, <laughs> it does it does become clear. So rather than the red surrounded ones, you might see in the background there is a grid which is 6x6. Six six. Not all of those are highlighted. Some of them in the background are highlighted, like this one for instance. And when I select it, the items in the bottom line, if you have a look down in your materials, they actually are enhanced so they're highlighted. So that means any of the ones that are highlighted I can now select to put inside that slot. So on this one, this mutagenic agent optimizes random roll value for all adjacent enchantments by 20%. So if I put that in and if I fill out all of these, you can't fill them out manually, you have to do it by hand. And you can see that on that particular slot, you can only select your adamantium plate or think, can't remember what that one's called, your cogitator uh, circuit. Okay, So you can only have one of those two in that particular slot. So if I put that circuit, because I've got as many, and again, I could select two at the end, the very far end, so electro wiring or mind impulse component, to make those even better. And if you've run out you can still make them by pressing triangle while you're in this mode so you don't have to worry too much about that particularly becoming a problem so if I again go down to well actually if I go down to the bottom right I can use the exceptional ones down the bottom okay and let's just fill out these last two as well if I put one of those there and one of those there that is now going to take me 72 minutes to make okay so I'm obviously not going to make you guys wait 72 minutes but if I start that I can craft it by now pressing triangle Obviously, it's got the standard skills for that particular weapon type. Okay, so that's not going to change at all. But I'll now craft. Now, if you look down in the bottom right hand side of this particular screen, bottom right, just above where it says circle to close, you've got a number of slots with gears in. That is your crafting queue. So, if you go into your tech tree on your crafting, uh, sorry, in your artificer, yeah, so you go into your tech tree, that is where you will unlock different things. So, for instance, you'll have um, augmented servitors, decrease the duration of every action on a production slot by 15, but you'll have things like. Um, Second Forge increases number of production slots by one. Again, Tertiary Forge increases it by one. But you do have more that unlock it. So you have... There is one which gives you... There you go. Increases number of production slots by three. With three production slots you can queue up crafting and modify actions. Okay. So you've got loads of different options. I've maxed out mine which means I currently have the ability to have three active and six waiting is what that's basically saying so that's how to make a basic item if I now said well actually that power hammer that I've just made I'm currently using a better version so I want a artificer version I can press the trackpad on PlayStation 4 again it will give you a tooltip of what you need to press but it's located just to the right hand side of your crafting list, your item list so on this it looks a bit like a trackpad or a, um, a laptop trackpad basically you press that and it starts highlighting and you can swap between your rare 
and your artificer items okay now if you have a look between the two you've got an aether blade there number 69 and the top icon is just a standard red box in the construction pattern area okay whereas if I go down to a artificer version you've now got what looks like an advanced version so let's see because I'm sure I've got a power hammer here so if I select that and I go down to power hammer mark 2 you can see it's quite significantly different and has different shape different layout and it's got two advanced options so if I fill the basics and it's also filled these slots here okay because I've got enough of those whereas it hasn't filled these slots here Nope, oh, didn't mean to do that I've just created a second hammer which um, never mind um, so let, let's do that again shall we um, <laughs> sorry about that so on materials I obviously need to create these items and let's have two of each so we've got more than enough okay so if I now go to power hammer I can't put anything in those particular ones. I can in this one. And if I put the alloy. But there's nothing here that I can put in there. Now currently, I think those are placeholders for future items. Because there is nothing I have been able to find or make that will allow me to put anything in there. There's no available spots or anything. However, if you have a look to the right of the icon that's flashing now, there seems to be a picture with three dots on it. Now, it might be that I need to get a special item to create those. I don't know. It might be that it's something they're going to add in later, um, which is also a possibility. So, at the moment, I can't fill that particular slot. What you should take note is that when you do look at your crafting list by pressing R3 then it will stop your your current assignment of items so you will have to go back in and uh, reselect the items and of course we can still do the old build these up with additional things although the more you put in the more the time and cost goes up as you can see. So let's just fill this out just because I'm feeling a bit crazy. I want to see what happens when uh, I put all of these in. There we go 126 minutes. So that is actually going to take me two hours and six minutes to build that. What you can get it's actually told me, look, it's told me I've got an offensive enchantment uh, between 14 and 16 hit points per hit, 3.3 to 4.4% melee damage. So it's actually told me what skills I am unlocking. Which is quite useful because the other one didn't tell me that at all. So let's craft that one as well. There we go. So the artificer ones actually tell you specific enchantments. Right, so those ones are now building. I will see if there are any. Now this should have updated, which it has. And there is a crafting queue thing. Now, I'm going to buy this. I wouldn't advise buying them because, as you can see, they cost 30000 Okay? So, unless you're really, really rich, don't bother. You can find them in the world. And, to be honest, unless you're really struggling, it's probably not worth paying the money just to speed up the process. I'm only doing this because I don't want you guys having to wait around for too long. So, there we go. So what happens once you've crafting's completed, it will, it will put the items in your inventory. It'll actually put them in a, a crafting result queue, as you can see. But, 
they do appear in your inventory as soon as you press the X button on PlayStation, which is to claim them. So there you go, they're now in your inventory. You can of course now compare them to what you're currently using and as luck would have it, they're all worse than the ones I'm using. Um, so, not brilliant, but at the same time, it, it can happen, unfortunately. So, the random enchantment I actually managed to get is 3.9 to melee damage and 5.2 critical hit and critical hit strength that is and then the other one is 2.6 to all damage and 3.3 critical hit chance so they are slightly different so what I can now do is I can either sell those or I can go straight back over here go to salvage and it's highlighted if you have a look next to my inventory slots on the left hand side it's highlighted the green and the purple hammer so if I press the trackpad in now I can select those and it will salvage all of my rare items and then tells you what you managed to achieve it's showing in the salvage result on the top right hand side above Omicron's picture and then if I do the same for my artificer items salvage there now if you select the individual items it will actually tell you the percentage chance of getting each type of item so if you've got a 20% chance there is a higher percent, a higher chance that you're not going to get anything by salvaging it so it is a risk and it is a gamble but if you're not going to use the item anyway and you don't need the money it's always better to try it and salvage because you are going to need a lot of items later on um, so that's the crafting system if we move on to the fusion system because the fusion system is extremely powerful and extremely useful so I've got all of these here all of these items which are suitable for fusion so if I get for instance my demolition armor and I get what am I never going to use the bolt pistol okay so if I get those two, and in fact I've got two plasma cannons, so I'll get that as well. In fact, I'm not going to do the armor. And I'll show you why I'm not going to do the armor. Okay. If I grab that, and I grab the grav gun, I think. Yeah, let's grab the grav gun. Okay, so, I'll, I'll show you. For the fusion system, you have the sanctified fusion in the center and the motive force o overload so the sanctified fusion is what you are fusing it's important to note the first thing you put in there is the thing you want to keep everything else will be destroyed so ensure that if you are going to fuse anything that you want to use you select it first okay so for instance if I want to fuse into this shield okay that is basically saying that the shield is now the item that I'm going to fuse other things into. The motive force overload is how much extra power you are giving that shield. What fusion does is it doesn't add the abilities of the new item, it takes the force of the new item, so if I put that one in, it's taking 23% additional force for your center item, which in this case is the storm shield, and it's taking that from the bolt pistol. Now the interesting thing is it's saying 23%. 23% is not going to do anything to my shield apart from raise its power rating. So currently its power rating is 128. Okay. So if I press triangle now to fuse those items, it's gone up to 140. Okay so now its power rating is higher which means you can go into higher rated missions and not any, have any negative effects now currently there's no way of taking that out of the fusion area so we quit back out we go back into fusion because I want to show you this if I have my plasma cannon and put that in the center this is exactly the same level okay so my shield and my pistol were the same level at power rating 128 
these two guns are the same level at power rating 255 so you would think that you're going to get 23% again you do so if you've got the same power rating it gives you a specific overcharge okay now I don't want that shield so that shield is 140% or oh, sorry 140 power rating so you should have a smaller value of overload which you do because it's 115 lower you went from 23 to 37 which is only 14 points so if you're trying to put an item with a higher power level into one with a smaller power level you can fully overcharge it now I'm going to do that by putting one of these weapons into the shield so if I put the shield in the center and then I put the grav gun in it's a hundred percent immediately now what that will do you can't see it yet but as soon as I fuse it you'll get two additional abilities on your shield and its power rating will go up immensely so it started out at 128 so let's see what it does 180 so it's almost doubled sorry not doubled it's added almost 50 percent of its power rating again and as you can see there are now two abilities extra on the bottom of the storm shield and those abilities are plus one tour resistance and plus sight five suppression regeneration per second now the value has gone up as well and that's basically it now you can't put anything else into that shield if I added anything else into that shield it won't let me fuse it at all um, mainly because you can't more than 100% overload it the interesting thing though is now that's 100% fused if I put the plasma cannon in the center and fuse the shield into it it's still a lower value so because that's 255 and the other ones have a lower rating it's not 14 percent anymore which it was before it's 17 percent because the difference between the two items is now not so great because instead of 200 I think it was 140 instead of 140 compared to 255 it's now 180 compared to 255 so the power rating of your item is what determines how much overload is applied so personally I'm going to put that in because I'm I'm not going to use the storm shield because I don't like them um, in fact let's just have a quick check because I know I've recently got and I've pressed the wrong button so I'm now going to the star map I do apologize I would say that's a schoolboy error because it is so let's go back to the bridge so I'm going to take off my oh no I've already done it you see I've already fused all of my items ah haven't my signums okay so I'll do it on these signums which one is the best one that one okay so I'm gonna fuse the signum which is 86 power level so that means that shield 100% overcharge it so that signum is now going to rapidly increase in power level and it should get two additional things on the bottom which it does so it's now 120 power level which is the maximum it can go to 50 suppression and one critical hit chance so I could do the same with my plasma cannon into my other signum because I'm not currently going to be using my plasma cannons so let's put that one back in this is how you get your power level as high as possible now you I know there is going to be a question for any of you eagle-eyed viewers out there I currently have a relic um, inoculator and it's not being used there is a very very good reason for that and I will show you so my relic inoculator currently has no red slots now the red slots are your balm which are basically your healing abilities 
Without a red slot, your inoculator cannot heal you. My inoculator currently is giving me damage reduction, boosting my damage, increasing the capacity by 5, and boosting the cooldown. That is all my inoculator will currently do. And if I compare that to my existing one, it's much better quality level for obvious reasons it is after all a relic however my equipped one has a balm which will allow me to heal 20% of my health every second for 20 seconds the downside of that is it does knock off quite a bit of your health um, whenever you activate it I have another one which is just a standard health boost so I get an instant gratification of 75% health and then it does a lot of healing over time. I have my shield one which is exactly the same, the damage reduction and I also have one which increases my capacity by 15 but the downside is it takes 30% of my health as soon as it's activated which is brilliant and if I had two red slots in my relic inoculator I'd be there, I'd be using it all the time. Um, unfortunately I don't have. I've got my two main implants um, to be perfectly honest I think I would possibly have swapped out but I'd already put a lot of my um, a lot of my equipment and points into my implant. What I might do though is I might put um, power axe am I going to use I'm not going to use the great axe anymore and that's uh, so 256 I'm going to keep that because this is the other thing it's important to try and manage which ones you use so my main implants only in 86 so I can use relatively low level item to boost its boost its power rating so I would be wasting my level 256 because my level 128 would do the job so if I go and put my level 128 item into my main it's 100% overloaded so if I now compare that to my existing one they're exactly the same as far as power rating but as you can see one all resistance is one damage reduction so I'm gonna lose 50 hit points and um, two warfare but I'm gonna gain 156 hit points so in effect I'm gonna gain 106 hit points over and above what I've currently got and 20% to all vulnerability effects so I think that's actually gonna do me a better job and that puts me over 6,000 hit points as well so yeah it is much better there you go, if I wasn't doing this video I wouldn't have even noticed that. Right, so I don't think I've been too long, so I'll quickly go over the other parts. So I've done a, a bit on the tech tree, that's fine. Um, so you basically pay credits and fate to get skills, basically. Some of which aren't don't have any prerequisites, so you can just get those straight away. Others you have to buy one before you can get the next simple as. So optimised crafting is the very first one that you'll have to get and then everything will lead off that obviously. The interesting ones modify. So modification allows you to re-roll the enchantments on an item. Now that item can be a rare, a master um, master crafted uh, artificer or even a relic if you don't like the skills on a relic. Now you can scroll across to your equipped items by pressing R2 on the PlayStation 4. What you can't do is actually select them from your equipment. You have to unequip them before you can select them. So if I just unequip for instance well actually let's not unequip any of mine because I don't think there's anything I want to change on any of mine. Let's do something that currently I am not utilizing. Um, let's try this assault armor. Why not? So, 
if I go into modification and I go put that in there. So it allows you to do all of the options on your armor or item, weapon, whatever it might be. The only thing it won't allow you to do, which I have tried so I do know this, is you can't change the slots on your inoculator. So when I said I have no red slots, you can't re-roll it to have those red slots. Okay? There it's basically it, it's skills in effect and its skills are tied to the inoculator just like you can't change the skill on this armor set. What you can do is you can change its dam damage rating, so its damage reduction, how many resistances it's got. It's the 6.1 damage reduction for ranged attacks, heat resistance and deflect. It's important to note that if you change any of these it can affect the item's power level because the power level is tied to how important the game feels those skills are. So for instance, at the moment its power rating is 128 and if I, I can't compare it here unfortunately, but if I try and compare it to my existing, let's have a look. So it's minus 53 quality. So let's just see what I can do if I modify the heat resistance. Okay, so as you can see, the amount it's going to cost to modify it again has gone up. So it's gone from 7,500 to 11,250 credits to modify that slot. That's because I've already modified it once. So that is now gone to 5.6% efficiency to slow and shock effects. So I can already tell it's dropped. So it was 128 power rating, it's now 127 and it's now 54 quality less, it was 53. So it thinks the previous skill was better than what it's now got. The heat resistance was better because it was 6.1%. Might just be the percentage, it might also be the fact that heat damage is more more important than the efficiency for your slow and shock effect. So it's important to take note that don't willy nilly change them because you might actually change it and the power level might drop. I have done that myself because I picked a more desirable skill for me but it dropped the power rating um, of my item and it meant that it was actually lower than the one I just replaced um, which did irritate me but at the same time I just carried on with the new one because it was a skill that I was actually after so it is a you do have to make that decision do I want one that the game thinks is higher or do I want none for my playstyle so that's it really I mean I could go into the appearance but to be perfectly fair um, it's pretty straightforward. You select the item you want to change. You have top left hand corner, you have your different mark. So you've got mark 1, 2, and 3 for the different skins you've got. Um, and the amount it costs to change their colour or change anything on them changes depending on which version you want. So if you've got mark 1, I've actually got my tech tree maxed so it reduces the cost, but that was a normally 5,000. Your second one was 30,000 I believe and your third one was 100,000 credits to amend. Now the irritating thing for all of you out there, if you've got a Mark III piece of armour and you want to change the colour, it's going to cost you that 100,000 even if you just change one colour. So my advice is, if you are using a Mark I armour or item or anything like that and you're happy with the look of it don't go to mark 3 it's just going to cost you a lot of money for a cosmetic a minor cosmetic change as you can see all that's happened is it's changing the color of it slightly and put some swirls on the handle so my armor is mark 3 it started as mark 1 but the armor does look completely different between mark 3 and mark 1 the hammer not so much so I would always just stick with mark 1 you can then select the material type so you can select whether it's honeycomb or anything like that um, that's literally just pressing the left analog stick 
and you can select what you want. You can also press square to change material styles, so not just the, the type but the style. So you can see the white spheres are changing as well. And once you've selected the material type etc you want, you then go down to colour, press X and then scroll to the colour you want to use. So if I now go back up I can see what material that's actually changing. There you go, it's changing the handle. As you can see. Once you're finished you can press triangle to apply. Um, and that's that's it to be fair you can also change the amount of grime which you can see more on armor it appears in the plates of the armor and obviously more on lighter colored armor I think you can just about see it on the handle on this one um, although it's not 100% clear where is an odd one and I, th I don't think they fixed it so it's either only specific items can show where or it doesn't work. I've never once found it that I can change the wear on something. Material Blender can and the Material Blend changes how the two colors of Material 1 and 2 interact with each other. So the colors that I've picked are relatively close so it's not going to make any difference for me but if you've got white and black for instance it changes whether it's solid white and solid black or whether it's a bit of a grey color. That's basically what, what it'll do. Well, I hope that's been useful, guys. Um, if it has, obviously, please leave uh, a comment in the in the comment section. Please like and subscribe as always. Um, share with all your friends. Let's uh, hopefully they'll be interested in the content as well. Um, I'm going to upload more videos without a doubt. And as this video is created by a request, if you have any more requests at all, please do let me know and I'll try and get to them as soon as I can do. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you as soon as possible. Bye for now.